what we do here is go back, 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 back. Morning, everybody. I'm on the bike to work. I've made it. That was quite a lot of exercise. More swings coming at you today. This guy plays off seven, says he has uh, a low left shot and takes big divots. Yesterday's question about spin. So what happens, the way it was explained to me, which I thought was quite a clever way of doing it, think of the dimples in the ball as spoons. And as this ball turns, say on an axis, if you use this black line, say on its slight tilted backspin axis, these spoons are collecting the molecules in the air and they're pushing them to the bottom of the ball and they're pushing them to the bottom and on this case my left side your right side of the ball so down here which makes the air heavier down there and lighter above and it ball moves into that lighter space it's kind of pushing away from the heavier space so the dimples work like spoons collecting the molecules in the air down to whichever side it's tilted which is then getting that curvature Today's question, why do we refer to say this face position or this one as open or closed? Surely it isn't anything yet because it's not being delivered to the ball. I've got a different word I use for it, two actually I use. Why do we refer to that as open or closed? So taking a look at today's swing, I've drawn a line straight up from the ball here. This guy plays off seven, has the odd low left, he says. Very good, powerful swing. I would like to see this impact having a slightly different association with the head in relationship to this yellow line. I don't like it moving forward of the line like this so much. I could see some smothers coming from this position. We're going to change your setup a tad to give you a fraction more lean this way. Just a tiny bit. And then we're going to have give you a slightly different feeling on the way through, just to try to, try to angle your body differently, to get your head from getting so far ahead of the ball, and hopefully just calm down face and path, and well, path more than anything else. I reckon your face control will be quite dynamically good, so it'll move to wherever we send the path. Great day teaching, blooming cold mind. Some really interesting improvements though, which was good to see from my students. Let's get on the bike and get home. So first idea, let's just get a fraction more tilt this way at setup. Just a tiny bit. So I tend to see a little bit of this, with a lot of this coming down into the ball. Definitely not afraid maybe to get that path going a little bit quick left with those kind of ideas. So I want to see a fraction more tilt this way, so right shoulder lower than left. Easiest way to do that, just put your right hand on last, set yourself up, right hand on last, and as you put your hand on, let everything fall into place with it. Let that just sink the hips forward and the right to shoulder come down with it. You're almost a bit more this way as you put it on. Just sink that up to try and give us a better chance of changing this relationship on the way through. This is often what I love about low handicappers like this. It's little tweaks, tiny little suggestions that can make all the difference in their performance. Whew, made it. Just a little. Enough. My legs are a bit achy. Let's answer your questions. Hey Mark, just a quick question for you on alignment. How can you improve it? I'm always aiming either too far left, too far right, or never down the middle. Any tips would be much appreciated. Cheers bro. I always challenge my students when it comes to aiming. Because you'll find the students' ideas of aiming are a little bit flawed. So they think it's the aiming that's making them hit offline. So let's say you've got a student who thinks everything evolves around aiming. My path and face the path thereafter relates more to the direction I want to start the ball and finish it. So I can have my feet Bubba Watson style aiming 45 degrees in another direction and still maintain the path and the face the path. That's the skill. I use my aim to assist some ideas of line. They don't make those lines happen. Those lines, those path angles, angle of attacks, face the path strikes coming from the skill of that delivery. So I often challenge my students to practice and I play with them in lessons. Don't aim at a target. Aim with your body and feet over there 
and show me a path which is moving in X direction. It's a great way to work on their skills and I think so many people forget this. If golf was a game of aim, then there would be different people at the top of it than there maybe are. Golf isn't a game of aim. Golf is a results driven game where delivery actually takes over. So I would challenge you not to fuss too much about aim. It's something that's really quite, I think, overlooked at by uh, golf coaches in years gone by. I'm not saying don't point your feet in some kind of direction, but the skill is being able to move your club and face the path in certain lines from any aim. You'll be surprised how low a skill set a golfer I can take and get them putting their feet at any angle and their path sustains. It stays where their default path stays because they have this desire to send the ball in a certain direction. Good question. Definitely hit that comment section up with this. Does that make sense? Let me know, does that make sense? I'd love to hear, because it's not, I think, the answer most people would have been expecting. That's my phone. How are you doing all right? Simple drill you can do at home in reference to that head moving forwards. Up against the door frame here, just get your head left ear up against the door frame and then make some back swings to follow throughs where you feel your lower body opening up, shoulders opening up, you feel like you push up to that door frame and then turn around. Obviously your movement is to go beyond. That's very good for maybe moving that path. Times can go down and maybe a bit left, those low big divot shots that you talk about, plus quick lefts possibly coming from there. So getting that feeling just at home of feeling your upper body staying back and rotating as your lower body moves forwards and rotating will give you the idea and the feeling that your upper body tilts need to get into to help you make that better downswing. I think this, with that little tweak of your setup, will completely change the way you interact with the ground and hopefully change the kind of shots you hit. There we go, thanks for watching. Post those comments down there. As always, hit that subscribe button. Go on, hit it. It's down there, it's there to be hit. Just give it a tap, it all makes sense. You get the videos in your inbox, that's cool, isn't it? Keep sending those swings. That one came via Twitter. It came via Twitter, actually, I think. And keep those video questions posting. They're all good, they're all fun. Let's all learn. See you next week. I'm gonna be in Spain next week, so hopefully I won't be as cold. But daily vlogs still coming at ya. Whew.